Hey's daf is daf lamed aleph, and with this Amir Tzashem, this onward we finish the Sefti Titus. We were mentioning all the explanations for the significance in the holiday of Tu Ba'ah. And you may recall that we had one shita that it was a day of Slicha Mechila. I mean, that's Yom HaKippur, but uh, Tu Ba'ah is a day of Uchru Shvatim Lavo Zebazeh, a day of, of Huta Shevet Bin Yom and Lavo Bakal. We mentioned the shita that it's Kolu Mesei Midbar, and that uh, Yom Shabito Oshea Ben Ela, Pros Doyos, Shahoshiv Yerav Ben Avat, Al Adrachim, Shayal Yisob Vialia. And we got up to Rav Masna. Rav Masna here, on the very top of Laman Aleph, Laman Aleph, says Yom Shednitnu Haruge Besar Likvura. This is the day in which those who were killed by the Romans in the city of Betar were given over for kfura. It was a long time that it passed. And during this entire period of time since their murder, the Malchus did not allow burial. On Tuba Av, they gave license to bury the dead. And therefore, it was established Yanta Petar was a gigantic metropolis which had rivers be destroyed. And 52 years after the Churban of Ayesheni, Malchus Romi, Govern. Govern means they had extra control power. They went in and moved in on data and they destroyed the entire city. And the Gemara tells us in Gitin that they sent 80,000 troops in order to kill men, women, and children. The blood of the deceased, the murdered, reached the Yama God. And for seven years, the Ovde Kochavim, were able to produce grapes in their vineyard without any, any fertilizer necessary. They just saturated the land with the blood of, of the Jewish people. And the Yushalmi adds that there was a Karim Gadol that belonged to Andri, Andriyunis Harasha. It was 18 mil square. And they surrounded it with a wall that was made up of the bodies of Haruge Besar. And this was Nigda'a Legamre Karen Yisro. And the Rosh says in the Seth of Brachos that Mashiach ben David. The Rosh says in Yushamri Atrianus, Russia would not allow the, the dead to be buried until after he died and he was replaced by another king said that we could bury the dead. This whole topic of Arugay Besar, which was after the Churban, our Mishnah seems to indicate that the Simcha of Tuba'av was before the Churban. At the time when the Kohen Gadol still was in office, when they barred the Godim from the daughter of the Kohen Gadol. We're going to have to say that according to Rav Masna, when the Mishnah says Yom HaKippurim, it means only on Yom HaKippur. That was the Yom before the In any event, Rav Masna continues and he says, Omar Rav Masna, also Yom Shenitnu Aruge Beis HaLikura, Tiknu B'Yavne Atov Amet. In Yavne, the Chachamim established an extra bracha added to Berkas HaMosan, Baruch Atov Amet, as a praise to God. And the language that was established, the Nusach was Atov al Shalo Hisrichu Ve'amativ al Shenitnu Likvura. So Sud is always considered a Makom Simcha, and they established this extra bracha at the Birkas Hamazon. And it's also a bracha that we recite if we have an upgrade in the wine that they bring out or on Shmuel's Tobos. On Gishamim, in general, and in Yoni Simcha. And Hatov means that Osetov be Atzmo. Hashem himself, the Chvod of Atzmo, did a Tov. And what was that? Shalom is Srihu. And Hamativ, which usually means in the active sense, Mativ al Yidea Acherim through others. 
And that's the tova that they were given to Kfura. Hashem gave it to the Leif HaMelech, the king's heart that he should allow burial. And the Marsha points out, also you'll see in the Tzlach and Brokos Memches, that Atov was on the Tova Saguf, on the physical phenomenon Shalom Esrich, and Ametiv was on Tovas Anefesh. And that is that a Nefesh without Kfura is a tremendous busy mess. Kvura is tovas a nefesh. A very important principle. Kvura is considered tovas a nefesh because as long as the body is not buried in the ground, then the ruach doesn't go automatically back to Elohim. And that's based on a Pulsky Kohelis Perikit Beis. And the tovas a nefesh of Adam Yisrael for one individual is a tovas for all the nefashas of Yisrael. All the nefashas of Klal Yisrael are united in their root, they're all one continuous chelik aloka mima. And therefore, it says, Ametiv, which is Atova, Afla Cherit. Some darshan that Shalom Srihu means that they were so bold and courageous that they fought to the end. That's called Lois Srihu. Rabbi Rav Yosiyami Shavayu, a last possible explanation for the significant holiday, the celebration of Tuba'a. And that is Yom Sheposku Milichos Eitzim Lamarach, which means that there's a certain simcha which is experienced when we complete a mitzvah, when a mitzvah comes to its ultimate conclusion. And here we have a mitzvah that continues up until Tuba Av of Krisas Eitzim Lamarach. Marach means the fire on the Mizbeach, which needs Eitzim. And they were sameach in that they were zoche lahashlim mitzvah gedola zu. And that mitzvah was completed on Tubav, and then they were established that day as a yontif. The Rashbam the Rashba, and also Ben Gershon, they point out that they were mispato mi Torah And once they completed the process of Krisa Saitzim, they made a yontif because now they were free without any pressure to study, dedicate themselves to the study of Torah. I knew we went to the Bryser of Yulezer, I got a Omer, Chamisha Sarbov, Eilich, Toshash, Kocha Shalcham. The heat of the sun reaches its pinnacle on the 15th of Av. After that, it starts weakening. And we need that heat of the sun to dry up the moist, trees and branches that were cut off. The law you carson ate some marocha from Tubav and on, they stopped the process of cutting down Eitzim, Lefishen Yevashim, because now the sun is not that hot, it doesn't beat down and dry the trees, and if the trees have moisture in them, then Toloim will attack them, and an Eitz, Sheyeshbo Tolas, is possible with Lamarach. So the simcha here is on the completion of the mitzvah of Krisas Eitzim Lemarach. We mentioned in the past that if a family would contribute voluntarily Eitzim, that was a simcha for them, it was a young tiv. Omar of Menashe, of Menashe adds that because of this great simcha, Karule, they had a name a nickname, so to speak, for Tuba Av, they called the Yom Tvar Mago, which literally translates into Hebrew as Yom Shvira Sagarzi. In other words, that's the day when the mitzvah was completed of Krisa Satsi Marocha. They didn't need the Garza, they didn't need the axe anymore for the Kima Mitzvah, Mikan Vielech. And now the nights start getting longer. And when the nights started getting longer, that's a Challenge each and every one of us to extend and increase our Torah learning. Therefore, the most, if somebody adds Asek HaTorah at night, and now the nights are getting longer, Yosef Chaim Al Chayim, he would be blessed with extra life. Because when the Torah describes the great Milo of Lima Torah, it says, Ki Hu Chayecha. Or, for example, in Mishlei, it says, Ki Orech Yomim Shos Chaim Bishalom Yosef and the Marek Shah explains that since on Tuba Av, from that day and on, the days become shorter. 
meaning the amount of light, and then the nights become longer. So he has to make up for the cutting down of, of Torah perhaps during the day, and he's marshaled by night, and Talmud Torah at night is a great mile. Below Yosef, ye Yosef. My Yosef. What does it mean that if he doesn't add Lima Torah at night from Tubav and on, he will be, so to speak, taken away? On Rav Yosef, Tikbere Imen. Nebuch, he'll be buried by his mother. He's going to die before his Zman. And there's a long discussion about why the emphasis is on Ime. The father is obligated period for Rivia. He needs sons in order to mekayim this mitzvah. And it makes no difference whether they're Talmidic HaChom or not. So this would not be a punishment for the lack of Chokma Satorah and dedication to Torah. This would be a punishment to the father be, insofar as he loses, he forfeits the mitzvah period of Rivia. But in the case of a mother, she doesn't have the obligation of period of Rivia. What she gets from her son when her son is dedicated to Torah is, as the Gemara says in Sota, Adav Chafal, Eshla Schar, she helps and aids her son to dedicate his time to Torah, and that's her Schar. But if her son is not learning Torah, then there's no Schar that she'll get, and therefore, Yeyosa. We learned in our Mishnah back on Adav Chavav, in the name of Shimon Gamliel, that Tuba'av and Yom Kippurim were the greatest Yom Tov. Shabahem, Venos, Yushalayim, Yotzeis, Bukli, Lavan, Shaulim, Shlolavayesh, Esmishayim. And the Venos, Yushalayim, the single girls of unmarried girls of Israel, will go out with white clothes, clothes that they borrowed, Tanrabon and Basmela. Each category of a lady, of a, of a young girl, would borrow from one notch lower than her. And that's all for the meter of trying to equalize the poor, the poor girls with the rich girls. So she has the most expensive, beautiful garments, but nevertheless, show else she will borrow from the next level down. That's the base, the bas Kohen Gadol. Again, the Kohen Gadol is considered Karov with some of the mouth, so for sure, that's high up on the Eshel. Bas Kohen Gadol, she would borrow from the next level down, one inch lower, which is Bas Sagan Kohen He's the Kohen uh, second in, in, uh, in position. And the principle, again, here, just to summarize, as the Marsha formulates it, called Isha Chashua, Hoysa Sho'eles, Big Day, Lovon, Mizu, Shalamata, Heimena, Bechashivusa, Shaloyu, Lohem, Godem, Chashubim, Kolka. It's sufficient if they're not wearing the bottom of the Godom Chashubim that are appropriate for their high status. For Yismai, Tahevdel, and that minimizes the gap they non Levain Benos Hanid. Baskan Kohen Gadol, Mi Bas Mashuach Mokhama, that's the Kohen who would announce in the Mokhama Shema Yisrael, Atem Kreb Mayom Mokhama, Al Yvechem, Al Yerach Levav. Bas Mashuach Mokhama would borrow her clothing from Bas Kohen Hedja. The Chol Benos Yisrael Sholim Zeb Mizeb. All of the daughters of Israel would borrow one from the other. So they're not to embarrass those who don't have. So if the higher echelon and higher status ladies are very beautiful, God, and that would embarrass those on the lower echelons of the financial society, the financial strata, the poor girls who couldn't afford such beautiful God. But here that each one of the girls would borrow from someone else who wouldn't know whether or not she's borrowing because she doesn't have, like in the case of an Oni, or she's borrowing because that was Takana, it was established that everyone has to borrow. The Mishnah says, Kala Kalim to Unim Tvila. Anytime a woman borrows Godin from her friend, she needs to take them to the mikveh Bitovil them. Because we're afraid that maybe the owner of the Godin, when she wore the Godin, she was a Nida, and the Begadim became Begadim Tbein. And then if you wear those Begadim, then you will contract tumor. So to avoid that problem, be absolutely guaranteed that the Begadim Atahorim, she would have to take the Begadim, everyone who bought Caleb would have, 
Godim would have to take the Godim and put them into the mikveh to purify them. Amr Rabbi Lazar, afilu mikupolim umunachim b'kufsa. Even if she borrowed from a friend garments that were folded up and were in a drawer, they are certainly tahorim. Nevertheless, they require to be loved. You don't want to embarrass those whose begotten really need tefillah. So we made it an absolute, all inclusive rule without exception that we need tefillah for the borrowed begotten. This is the way Rashi learns this to do. Rabbi Gershon writes that even if they were Kupala Bakufsa, we're still afraid maybe Yashma Lehem, Isha Nidavitim Asam Kidim Moshe Hazat. The Mishnah says that on the 15th of Av and Yom HaKippur, Benosus Shul Yotzos, Vecholos Bikramen. In other words, they dance out in the vineyards. How do we learn to the rice of Mishael Lo Isha, Nifne Lasham, only single men? who are looking for a zivug, for a marriage partner, will go out to the Kramen. And this is one of many indications that everything was done with Derech Tznius. The mission says, Omros, <laughs> The attractive girls would say to the Bachrim who are out there in the Kromim looking for a marriage partner, Tnuay Nechem Liofi, look for beauty. Shaina Isha El Liofi, a woman is married because of her beauty. Those who had good Yichus, special Yichus, but they weren't necessarily so beautiful. Why you almost, what would they say? And they would say, implying not. Yofi, Yofi is not on the top of the echelon, it's not the most important priority, but rather it's look at family. It's important to marry into a good, solid family. So we said that the various groups of young ladies, of single girls, would each try to appeal to those single young men who were coming to the Cholos, to the Kromim, to look for a Bat Zug. And now we're up to the second group, which are the uh, Miuchasos. Miuchasos means they came from very good, solid families. And they said, you know what? Even though Yofi is important, but don't you know, don't downgrade the significance of mishpacha. You can have children, and those children will now have a long lineage of yichus, and you'll be able to marry off your children very easily, because everybody wants to get yichus. They want to build mishpachos that have long traditions, and this, by the way, will apply whether you'll have male children or female children. Yichus is an important element. And here in the footnote, he says, Ein ashkina shore, a gemara kedushin, el al miuchasos shebi Yisrael. Now, what happens to a girl who belongs to that third group? She's not from the Ephephios, she's not from the, you know, Miss Universes, and she's not from the Yuchasos, a very plain kind of background, no great Yuchos. Is Mechuaros Shebehen? Again, I don't think the word Mechuaros here should be taken literally, that they're necessarily ugly, but it means they don't have that beauty. But you all value almost, what would they say to try to attract the men? Chu Mikachem, Mikachachem, Lishum Shamayim. Kechu Esaisha, Lishem Mitzvah. Don't be impressed by Yofi. You know, beauty is something that lasts for X number of years. Even Yichus, you know, a person can build his own Yichus. That's what they say about uh, Rabbi Yodas and Ivishitz, you know, and, and others that build your own Yichus. And then these last three words are very challenging. First, we'll translate them literally. 
Zehuvim are Tachshitim. So we're talking about jewelry. Atru means to beautify with jewelry. And it means that after we get married, you can beautify your wife. And you can buy our beautiful garments, a wonderful wardrobe. And in that sense, she could almost make up for the lack of, let's say, natural physical beauty. And here in the note, he quotes the Eitz Yosef, Shebikshu came, they shall yidei kach yashuvu lios nos. Sorry, benos yisrov yatzman nos. We have a principle based on a Gemara in the Dorim of Samachvav, that Pnos Yisrael in and of themselves are beautiful, just that sometimes they get poor and as a result of poverty, they can't dress the right way, wear the right cosmetics and the right jewelry, so they don't appeal so beautiful, but all this can be corrected. This can be improved upon. Eino Isha, the Gemara says, it's Subas El Lenoi, Eino Isha Lebonim, Eino Isha Lotachshitei Isha, so the Ephesios, the beautiful ones, will emphasize the Noi. The Muchasos will emphasize Bonin. And the third level, they'll emphasize Tachshite Noshin, that Yofia Isha is really a reflection of the jewels and the jewelry and the dress, the garments that she wears. The Vilagon says that Mishnah Senu, our ambitions of the opinion, that Eino Isha El Lebonin. And therefore, tain a nechel bivishpacha, sheker a chem vehevel a yof. Don't look for chem and beauty and grace, but rather look for something more solid, more essential. You know, a woman coming from a good family, you no know, doubt, brings great midos to the table. So don't judge it by dover chitzoni, but rather mishpacha. Now we have a question here. How can it be that the Chachamim advocated in this minnow that the women, the young girls, will go out to the Kromim, you know, to the vineyards, and anyone who wants to find a marriage partner would, would so to speak, pick out one of them and, and, and choose her? I mean, it means that you know, just come and pick one. It, it really, in a sense, seems to, at the face of it, sort of subjugate the, gir the girls. He says, If a person had the wherewithal to marry off his daughter on his own, and he didn't need to go out, send her out into the macholos of the Kramim, that's what he would do. But how you shalom, he see an there were poor families that couldn't marry off their daughter. In order to solve that shit of crisis, they would, you know, they would send out the girls to the Kronen. And And the people at that time were motivated by L'shem Shemayim, by the right reasons. Habonos, Lovshos, Kli Lovon, the girls would wear white clothing, Lalamichi Yetzahara, Vesulak Mehen, that there's no Yetzahara, and Nikios Michet, the Nikios is manifest in the white garments, Bechalais, Shlomo Mel says in Kohelis, you, but Begadecha Levonim, and the Major in Kohelis says, Bechalais, you, Begadecha Levonim in Averos, Lakacha, you, Omros, Bechar, there was no chash of Yetzirah, everything, everything was done with Tzniyus. Now, to finish up the Mesech, the Mishnah says, based on a Posig in Shir Hashirim, Se'eno ure'eno benos Zion b'melech Shlomo b'atorot sh'itrolo imo, b'yom chasun aso, b'yom simchas libo, b'yom chasun aso zemat in Torah, so the Gemara now brings a Maimar. What will the Benos Tzion, who are mentioned here in this Pasuk in Shirashim Parak Gimel, how will they look in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch HaMelech Shlomo, which is a metaphor 
for the Almighty when the base of Migdash will be rebuilt in the of Yamenu. And not only how will they appear in the eyes of the Almighty, but how will they, so to speak, visualize Akash? Will be their sight, their vision of Akash? Omar Ula Bira, he came from a place called Biri. Omar Abulazi said the name of Lazar Asin Akash Baruch at the end of days. Lasos Machol, Machol is a circle of Magal. Lat Sadikim. So all this is going to take place in Gan Eden, posthumously, and the tzaddikim will sit around in a machol. And Akash Baruch Hu is the hub. He's in the middle of this machol. Because each one could point his finger and see God. Shenemar, Pasuk in Yeshaya, the Omar Bayomahu, Hine Elokeinu Zek, Kivinulo Vyoshienu, Za Hashem Kivinulo Nogila Venismacha Vishpaso. Now, this Machol is Alder Haso, so that's beyond our comprehension. But more Alder Hapshat, Rabbi Noah Vram Ben Aramba, in a book that he authored called Mukhamas Hashem, writes that we cannot take this Agoda Kipshuta. As if God is sitting and you can point to God and he's physical and there's a machol, but rather machol is a remez. It's an illusion. It's a metaphor. For simchas nafshon, the rov hatainu beganedu, the tremendous, absolute, spiritual, pure joy of Gan Eden, in which the tzaddikim are around in a circle. And that circle is a metaphor for simchas nafshon. Simchas Nafshim. Because again, the Tainu comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they're all situated around HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Uma shenem HaKadosh Baruch Hu omed beineem ha-kavana shi di osam es Hashem tiye krova yosem mea yidiya she efshal ahasi bolma ze. The yidiya and the kirva that they reach and achieve in Olam Abba in Gan Eden supersedes that that they could possibly achieve here in this world. And call Echen Marabets Boal Kodesh Prof, that's a Moshal, she call Echen Mehem Yigia, Yagia Tachlis Ayidia, She Efshal Lahasti. That's how it feels as we end Mesef the Tainis, as we reach that close level of Kirva, that we should have Kidusha, Tara, Tachlis Ayidia, She Efshal Lahasti, Hadron Alecha, Mishlosha Prochim. Tomorrow we begin with Seth Megillah, Megillah Nikres, and the Mishnah teaches us on what days of Chodesh Adar we read the Megillah in different locations, the B'nai Kfarim, the B'nai Krachim, the Prozim. I wish you a great day.